Well, welcome back to another episode of Canon Conversations. I got a special guest. Uh, he is a great dude, a great guy, a great father, a great husband. And I personally, I know I'm going to hurt some people's feelings with this, is one of the best space hosts I've ever met or ever heard. That's Ghost. So thank, thank you for you. coming on, man. No, it's hey, been a pleasure a getting to know you. Me. Yeah, it, my pleasure, honestly, because we were talking a little bit off camera. We actually see eye to eye on a ton of stuff. We have a little bit different personalities, which, you know, the world would be boring if we didn't. But <laughs> I really do feel like you like a long lost family member. And we right. haven't ever met in person. I always like to let people know if we have or we haven't. But someday I hope that changes. Yeah. But we're here to talk about something a little bit off the cuff so candid conversations we talk about a little bit of everything yeah. we had some super we had a real real super serious episode a couple of weeks back with rudy we talked about poker with hannah and today we're going to do an nfl preview because i came with the neutral colors try not to show my red kingdom there might be a little chief's I always forget the helmet. helmet back there. Just as a little, you know, <laughs> Easter egg. But you're rocking the Steelers jersey, so we already you got. Know, you know, I, I I was like, give me a minute. I had to go represent for the Steelers, man. I'm die hard. You know, obviously I'm in LA, right? So I don't oh, have yeah. the, uh, the ability to to stay loyal to my city because I was a Ram fan. Play a little mm. Pop Warner and the Rams gear and everything. I love the Rams when I was growing up. And uh, they left. They went to St. Louis, Missouri. Yeah. Right? Jerome Bettis simultaneously went to uh, the Steelers. Pittsburgh. Yeah. yeah and, and I was rocking in little terrible towels as a little one. So um, the I've bus never, was a never beast. Left. He was the best. Watch. Yeah, he man. Was so fun. Rumbling, bumbling, stumbling. I used to love him. Berman used to just. Oh man. Yeah. I missed the bus, man. It's classic. It. It's classic. It is. So we talked a little bit off camera. We're not going to get into the every little piece of information that we possibly can get into, but we are going to go through the divisions and we are in the conferences. And basically what we're going to do is we are going to pick who we think is going to win and why. And then the biggest disappointment in that division, and it's a prediction, right? I mean, I, heads up, I, I'm probably going to be wrong on behalf of these, but normally I'm pretty spot on. But it doesn't necessarily have to be the per the team that you think is going to lose the division. Sure. Just the biggest disappointment. And sure. then what I'm looking forward to the most at the very, very end, we're going to do our rapid fire section. I got probably more questions than I should for it to be rapid fire, but okay. I'm real <laughs> curious to see what your answers are going to be there. So I let's kick it. it off with the AFC East. Since we don't really have a dog in that fight, do you have who you think is going to win that division? So there's the variable of Aaron Rodgers, right? Yeah. Is he going to be healthy? Because if so, the Jets obviously have some weapons, right? Be tough. They're, they got weapons. Um, the Dolphins, on the other hand, it, kind of the same scenario. You kind of know what you're getting. Um, but Tua, health is a concern. I think he had a pretty stand-up year last year with his health. So that was a decent. really good bounce back year. I wasn't but expecting honestly, that out of him. Me too, right? Um, obviously, you know, Tyreek Hill and, and A-Chain's ridiculous. The running backs are ridiculous. They got uh, – Waddle kind of gets a little injured here and there. Um, Mostert comes in there, runs the ball strong. Yeah, Mostert and A-Chain together is just top-notch. I can't um, believe Mostert's 31 years old either. He don't run like he's 31 years old. He doesn't. He doesn't. I mean, I'll never forget on the Niners. You remember when he broke his own? Yeah. Yeah. And he that thing looked like – Oh my! I'll never forget that 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 tackle when he went to plant on the ground and it just mm, broke that's his arm. Nasty. That's one of those top ten nasty injuries. Yeah, in I the didn't NFL. Think he, to think that was like what four years ago, probably. Mm -hmm. Probably right. Yeah. I think it was probably, or was roughly. Like, yeah, man. So to see how good he's still doing, yes, dude. And A chain came out of nowhere, so you got that explosive thunder lightning one two punch. Mm -hmm. So the Dolphins obviously are are, are the they're top notch. Did they but, do enough on the defensive side? So, so here's my whole I don't thing. Know. Here's my whole thing. Patriots out. Okay. Um, they, they don't even know what's going on with coach, quarterback, the whole nine yards. Um, Bills losing digs was weird to me. I don't know if the dynamics are going to change there, um, and maybe that's just what Allen needed. You know, I, I know they got um, Curtis Samuel. I think it is. I believe yeah, so. 
I think they got Curtis that, Samuel. You know, he's got that up. rookie who everybody's saying is going to be a stud. I can't remember his name all of a sudden, but I couldn't either. I drew a blank. I, I was Coleman, like, maybe. Yeah, I can't remember either. Yeah, it's it's it's. I did I did three drafts already, so my mind's all scrambled with. with I'm with you 100. percent But yeah, I gotta say that I think the Dolphins. I think they edge out the division. I think the biggest disappointment, to be quite honest, I gotta go the Bills because they <laughs> lost Diggs. Uh, you know, Shakir's pretty good. They, you know, their run game, you know, you got Dalvin da- Cook's little brother, James Cook. You know, he's got all the potential, pedigree, the whole nine yards. So I think people are still hyping them up. The Bills, the Bills, the Bills, Bills Mafia, et cetera. I think that they'll be the biggest disappointment in the division. I think the Jets might give the Dolphins a run for their money. I think the Dolphins ultimately, uh... ah, yeah, I, I think the Dolphins are going to take it down. Too many variables with Aaron Rodgers and health. So. Well, if it makes you feel any better, I've already wrote down my answers. You can't okay. look at it real because I want you to cheat. But I won't, I won't, I won't. we picked the same two teams. I went with the Dolphins as one of the division. I think they will edge out the Jets. Me too. Uh, I think there's a really good chance with Aaron Rodgers. He doesn't – I'm not saying he'll be injured for the whole season like he was last year, but there's a good chance he's going to miss a couple games. I think everyone's beating up on the Patriots. I think the Bills will be the lucky to go to go 500 against – all the teams in their division. Yeah, I think there's a good, real good chance they lose more than four games in their own division. They have a pretty tough. Well, out remember of, last year, right? Mm-hmm. They had a losing record. I think they were three and six at one point, and they just made a nice run on the end. Mm-hmm. I don't think they can bounce back from something like that. So, Do you yeah. feel like at some level with the Bills too? I, I call them the biggest disappointment. I, I don't, but part of me isn't expecting much out of them because I felt like, and we'll get into the Ravens in a little bit. I felt like last year for the Ravens and the Bills, like it all stacked up perfect for them. Like they both had, I mean, the Bills, if they would have won, would have had to go to Baltimore, but they both had the Chiefs on the road for the first time. That was supposed to be a big deal, and it didn't pan out for either one. I kind of feel like with the Bills, is that window starting too close? Yeah, I mean, I I don't know. I, I hear you loud and clear on it. I think that Josh Allen is a risk taker in that red zone. I think you need yeah. players like Diggs to. to I really saw you get him. lit up on X for saying that, though. <laughs> but I agree with you. Hey, you know what's funny is like if he was my QB, I'd be the happiest dude in the world, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Josh Allen's a beast. There's no knock on his on his style of play. Yep. I love the grit, right? But that red zone is extremely it's important. Important, right? And if your defense isn't top, 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 like the Jets' defense, right? Mm-hmm. If, you're, if you don't have a defense like that, you're going to put your team in in, in some compromisable you know, positions where you could have gotten three points at least, right? So I think that his risk-taking will continue this year. And, and you mark my words, I think his red zone performances are, are why they're going to struggle. And I think it's because you can't lose a player like Diggs and just think you're just you're fine. The only way it doesn't, I think, is if Kincaid, the tight end, takes a giant leap from last year. Because he was good last year. But he's going to have to go next level because they're going to need that. Because I don't think Shakira and Coleman and those guys are going to be able to carry the load. But I've been wrong before, and we will see what happens. I love Josh Allen. I really do. I like to talk trash about him, and we'll get into a little bit why later. But uh, at the same time, that's just – I'm with you, man. A Dolphins to win it and Bills to be the biggest disappointment. I think it's really hard to pick a biggest disappointment in this division, though, because it's so obvious that the Patriots are – below everyone yeah and then i feel like the other three all have kind of a shot so just basing it kind of on fan base correct no for sure afc west okay you want me to go first this time or you want to go first yeah totally up to you let's switch it up let's do it we'll alternate it okay yeah i think the chiefs win it again i think that they are actually better squadron for those of you that don't know i am from kansas city you can see the and i've been (laughs) just for the record I've been a Chiefs fan since they drafted Derek Thomas in like 1988. Okay. Wow. So okay. we went through a lot of years. I can't tell you how many times we would go to the playoffs with the best record and lose in the first game. And then we went, I think it might have been 12 years without even sniffing the playoffs. And so it's, yeah. it's not a fair weather thing. I'm not a bandwagon guy. I've been there for a really, really long time, but they're doing something very magical right now. Like they are clicking on all cylinders. That defense last year, in my eyes, is wide. Most underrated. Agreed. Most, you had linebackers flying all over the place. 
two of the best cover corners in the league on the same team. You had the pass rush. And even in the Super Bowl, people forget we we were missing um, Charles Aminahue. Aminahue. Aminahue, yeah. Yeah, defensive uh, okay. end. So, yeah, he's a monster. Yeah, Aminahue, he, and he's going to miss, I think, the first four games because he did blow his knee out. I believe it was in the Baltimore game. Didn't play in the Super Bowl. Um, he's going to be back. He's going to be fresh. They open with the Bills I, and the Bengals, and both at home. If they can start 2-0, they put two real big-name teams behind them. And, and their second-half schedule is going to be way easier in their first half. And let me tell you, the Bills start off slow as do the Bengals, especially with Joe Burrow coming back. So that, Well, that, and Jamar Chase. Jamar Chase ain't real happy right now either. So I, 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 there, I think it just lines up, man. I think we're in that when we look back 10 years from now, we're going to look back at this stretch of Chiefs football and go, Dynasty. we were living in history. And, and some people didn't want to recognize it. But to me, it's kind of like Tom Brady. Couldn't stand Tom Brady. Couldn't stand the Patriots. But looking back on it, you got to throw respect at it. Like, you want to know what's funny? Yeah. When Tom Brady won the Super Bowl for the Bucks, mm -hmm. is when I finally. Me too, kind of. I hated it because really it was against the Chiefs, but. But it was like, even the even the the Atlanta Falcon game when it was twenty eight three and he came back. At that point, I'm like, man, you you got to crown the guy now. At this, point. I was really starting to teeter on that at the, the yeah. Falcons game. Yeah, that yeah, was that's insane. where I was like. Because I, I found myself rooting for the underdog when you don't have skin in the game. So right. 28 to 3, I'm like, all right, I, look, I want to see you come back. I want to see so, history. Right. And yeah. so here's the thing with Tom Brady. If that stretch didn't happen with the Pats, people wouldn't be able to deny the Chiefs as a dynasty. It's oh, just no. the fact that the Patriots just did something for two decades, dang near, that mm -hmm. were so un unparalleled to things we've seen in the NFL – that it's going to be a hard thing for them to be in that consideration. But you're absolutely right. When we look back and we reflect at Patrick Mahomes, you're going to say this kid is second to none. I mean, he's, I think so too. Even if he doesn't quite match the rings, you know, if he doesn't get to Brady, if he's within one or two, I think it's going to be really, he's at least going to be on the Mount Rushmore because yeah. I could, I could have that argument with you, yes. but if you, I, I may not be able to change your mind that Brady's the goat, but it's going to be one and two, and everybody else is going to be behind, barring injury, because you never know what's going to happen there. But people forget, too, that one of Brady's Super Bowls, one, he beat the Chiefs, right? And I think part of that was it was good fortune. The Chiefs' offensive line was trash. They were injured. They were banged up. Even the guys playing, I'm not, not taking anything away from Brady. But you forget a couple of years before that, Brady beat Mahomes in overtime in the in Mahomes' first AFC championship game. That doesn't happen if D4 doesn't line off offsides because to go do the tie and score, he, Brady threw a pick and the game was over, but D4 lined up offsides. So that changes the whole dynamic too. Mahomes may have got his first that year and Brady didn't add to his total. So I got to go with the Chiefs to win the West. I just – I don't think anybody else is ready. I think some of them have taken very good steps. But my biggest disappointment in the West might come as a shock. It may not. I think it's the Chargers. And I think it's basically because I'm not saying they're going to lose the division, but I don't think the Broncos have much hype behind them. I don't think the Raiders have much hope or, or hype behind them. And with a new coach in Harbaugh at San Diego, I think that's where the hype is. Yeah. I think it's going to take a year or two to get his guys in there to run his program. I think he'll be a successful coach. I don't think he'll do some of the dumb things and gamble in certain situations that some coaches do versus the Chiefs because they're afraid they're not going to touch the ball enough or whatever that may be. I just don't quite think they have the talent, especially at wide receiver, if it becomes a shootout. And I'm still not sold on Josh Herbert. I'm just not. Well, I watched him play at least – yeah, coming back like that is and, – and you don't have Keenan Allen. You don't have Mike Williams. Um, you, you're going to have to rely on rookies and second-year you know guys. No Austin Eckler. I mean, no. he's got a new squad. It's going so, to be – I do believe their offensive line stuff, but I think there's really not anybody in that division you can look at and say there's so much hype it's going to be a disappointment except the Chargers.
So I agree with that to the. That's where I'm at. What do you think? I mean, I'm literally so ridiculously parallel, which is kind of scary because I think now we'll probably see something crazy. Um, yeah, I agree. I want to say we're going to start off on the same page and then we're going to be doing this at the right. end. <laughs> well, no, it's like, you know, like you said, right? The Raiders, I mean, we got Minshew starting. Yeah. Um, Serviceable, um, but he's not taking to the promised land. Yeah, you just. I don't think. There can't possibly be hype around it, right? For it to be a letdown. They, they go eight and eight, uh, nine and eight, and you're like, oh, that's, that's serviceable. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they very well could finish second in the division. Right. And then like I think, said, honestly, uh, almost anybody could. I just don't know about the Broncos. I just don't believe in them right yet. I think anybody may get it turned around, but not yet. No. Starting Bo Nix at quarterback. Rookie quarterbacks, usually it takes them a while. No, nah, yeah. I, I, I Again, you can't get behind the Broncos as even a Bronco fan and sit there and be like, oh, it's our year, right? No, but I think you can is, hope that you're building in that right direction. Right. Correct. So. But I'm again, no letdown, right? It wouldn't be a letdown if they went nine and eight either. But no, people would probably playoffs, be happy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The Chargers missed the playoffs. That's a letdown. So I think, uh, I think I'm aligned with that. Absolutely. Well, I think the first two divisions here are the easiest ones for us to be aligned to. And I'm not saying there won't be other matchups, but we're to your favorite division now, the North, AFC North. And it's you get to go first this time. So. I appreciate the way you line that up, to be honest. You got to talk about yours, now I get to go in mine. So, okay, so AFC North, one of the toughest divisions in football, you know, arguably sure, but it definitely one of the toughest. In Top the to bottom, it really is, I think, really this year is. especially. Um, you know, obviously I'm biased. Let's just see the jersey, right? My heart will tell you the Steelers will win the division this year. Okay. Right, that's my heart. Um, I think Burrow coming off of an injury and it's his throwing elbow. Like you said, uh, Jamar Chase, the contract issues that they're having. Sometimes it, it, it gets fixed right at the right moments and they roll with beautiful momentum. Um, but they have no more mixing, right? Mixing left. Say hi, yep. Kobe. Come on, bud. <laughs> Come on, bud. It happens um, with Holly all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Holly, I know you're paying. Um, you should have seen us when we had Zoom school, dude. Just oh, I bet. All, I'm like, oh, my goodness. I bet. Um, so, yeah, so, you know, sometimes the things align right away at the right mm -hmm. time, and everything just maps out and pans out, kind of like Ayuk getting his contract recently. Yeah. So, you never That'll know. That'll be interesting. It'd be interesting, right? But, you know, they did lose Mixon. Um, I think that's going to be the biggest disappointment. Because the Bengals always have a lot of hype. Ever since they lost the Super Bowl, mm -hmm. they really haven't gotten back to that, you know. But they're still a strong contender. And I think mm -hmm. that becomes the biggest disappointment, okay? Okay. Um, as far as the Browns go, we can all laugh and joke. It's the Browns, right? I mean, you, you really can't ever say it's a disappointment for them, considering they're, they're the quote-unquote Browns. But... Um, they got a roster, right? Mm -hmm. Now, is Deshaun Watson going to be anything close to himself? I mean, he had a couple spurts of it. He does need to get reacclimated after having a couple seasons off. So, yeah, if there's any year, this would be the year he would step up to the closest to his truest form. Um, but, you know, that wears on you mentally, going through the things that he went through, whether that's rightfully so or not. Not here to stipulate. I don't even know too many of the details. because Yeah, I don't out. either. But... Overall, I need, again, I just can't find myself saying the Browns is a disappointment. Um, with the with the Ravens, anything short of one or two playoff wins would be a disappointment, right? Yeah. So if Lamar stays healthy, which I know he got banged up last season, if he stays healthy, I can see the Ravens winning the division. But the reason why I, it's my heart, but it's also my mind, you know, one in seven, the last eight games against the Steelers, like we just, for whatever reason, have the Ravens down pat. Even Lamar Jackson's one in five in his career against us. Yeah, and, and so, some teams have other teams' numbers, and I can't even explain to you why. It's just the matchups, coaching, whatever it may be. So I'm with so, you. So, so and my, my theory is Tomlin, AFC North football is AFC North football, right? Right. He, he gasses this up more than anyone in the world, right? So there's a certain oomph that he makes his team bring that you mm -hmm. wish you could almost bottle up and bring it to every week because it's it, it really is a different game. 
So I think that we can go one and one against the Ravens, one and one against the Bengals, one and one against the Browns even. And that's enough to really put us in a good position because the Bengals will probably sweep the Browns or the Raven. One of them will sweep one of them is my whole thing. Seems so, like the Browns almost always beat up on the Bengals for some weird reason. Do. Even when the Bengals are good, it's super I mean, weird. I'm telling game, you, AFC North football. Yeah, it's, it's different. It's like one and one. To sweep an AFC North football is hard, man. Mm -hmm. um, so the way I see this is schedule now, right? I go into the schedule. The Steelers have a really soft schedule to start the year. Mm -hmm. But I think we got Bills, Chiefs, um, Ravens, of course. Uh, we got a ridiculous schedule in the second half. So I don't believe Russell Wilson will be our starter by then. What I'm hoping for is Russell does enough in the beginning to still get the wins because of our defense, but we just don't see enough on tape to have full faith in the system. Not quite explosive when, enough, maybe. Yeah. And that's where I think new offensive coordinator came into play. Mm -hmm. Arthur Smith is strong. You know, mm -hmm. people forget when he was on the Titans, he had Derrick Henry being King Henry. Mm -hmm. Tannehill wasn't much, but no. Tannehill had his best career he's ever had. He made under, a lot of money because of that guy. Under Arthur Smith, right? <laughs> yeah. And then, of course, D-Hop, DeAndre mm -hmm. Hopkins, right? So it, it's very similar what he has. He has a Russell Wilson that's kind of like a Tannehill in his older age. He's not going to yeah. be able to run and gun anymore. No. So you got that fundamental football at the at the helm that can make a lot less mistakes. Mm -hmm. We bolstered up our offensive line like no other from the draft to dra from, from trades from Philly. And then on top of all of that, we got a dual running back out of nowhere, Warren King, mm -hmm. and just thunder and lightning all over again. And then you kind of have Najee's kind of like the Derrick Henry of the group. Right. And then you have the D hop of the group is the George Pickens. Mm -hmm. So, I was hoping we got like an Ayuk or or someone to compliment. Man, that would have put you over the top big time. Yeah. Vance Jefferson, mm -hmm. complimentary to Cooper Cup, was decent. I honestly uh, thought if you could have signed Mike Williams from the Chargers that that maybe because it was a different kind of receiver, you know, and and he, that didn't end up working out either. But you got some freaks on both sides of the ball for we, sure. Losing Deontay Johnson was a rough thing to do. Yeah. Um. And I just don't know who's going to step up as that WR2. I mean, there's even rumors circulating that Juju Smith-Schuster might even come back around. I'm like, ah, uh, no, dude, I don't the like Chiefs it. just signed him. Did they? Yeah, they just what, signed yesterday, him. Day before? Yep, uh, two days ago, Wednesday. Wow. For those that don't know, we're recording this on a Friday, so it was two days ago. The Chiefs wow. signed him. Smart. And I've That's seen smart. him in practice. He looks better than he did when he played for the Chiefs the last time. Like he slimmed down. He's ripped. I think he's motivated. I don't I think he's going to be a, even the number three, but he is going to be – our wide receivers room is going to be deeper than it's ever been in ever. the last – since Mahomes Brown, has been there, for sure. Hollywood Brown was the yeah. perfect. If he didn't wreck his shoulder in that preseason, he still may open up the season, but that is the perfect offensive threat for Mahomes, if you ask me. For but, Mahomes, I agree. Yeah. You're going to really open up Kelsey, too, because you got route runners, right, and speed still. And where these fast. Yeah, your recipe is sick. I love the way that you guys yeah. have it down pat. So I'm looking at it this way. The Ravens getting Derrick Henry makes them the number one should win the division. Okay. So you should probably have the Ravens now. But I think that we're going to win enough games before we transition into Justin Fields. And I think that's the perfect setup. He's used to the cold. He's used to this style of play. He's just never had consistency at any position. He's and never I really had weapons around him either. Never. Not People want to say they he did, but I never. don't think so. Never. Never consistently. No. David Montgomery, solid running back, sure. But Najee and Warren will take the cake. You know, George mm. Pickens, he's never had a George Pickens. DJ Moore was the closest thing he had. But he didn't have a, a lot of time with him either to really gel with him. And no, one so I'm with you. So, yeah, so you I'm, going I'm, with the Steelers? Yeah, I'm going to go with the Steelers, but I do think we still make a trade midseason. My prediction is simple. Russell starts, obviously. Justin Fields takes over by week four, week five. Still a 3-1, 4-1 record. Yeah. And then we, we we sustain enough to make the playoffs and, and we win the division. And I think we'll make a – we'll acquire a wide receiver at some point. There will be a trade that we'll make. 
Yeah, and I don't know for sure, but I'm going to guess there's some veteran out there too that still hasn't signed that may end up, you know, some of those guys nowadays, and it's smart, you get in your, you know, 33, 34 years old, if you want to make it through the season, you're not going to training camp. You're going to wait till week four, five, six to sign with somebody. Yeah. And I'm not sure, I'm not, they're not going to be a, a number one, obviously, or they would be making big money, but there's somebody out there that they could definitely bolster that. And, you know, what goes it also to, it doesn't even have to be the coaches that make the decision on fields. It could just be Russell misses a quarter because he sprained an ankle and all of a sudden fields comes in, lights it up. And now they're like, uh, let's go. Why don't you rest that ankle next week? Yeah. We'll see what happens. And then if he has another standout game, you make the move. So, I mean, we saw last year, right? I mean, you finally get a, you know, pick it. He mm -hmm. goes down and, and Mason finally gets his chance. And mm -hmm. uh, because of the way we finished, Mason got the keys. I still think that things could have been different. Um, I agree with against you. Against the Bills, man. I think, number one, the league really destroyed it with switching the game, dude, because of snow. I thought that was – I get Super it. Super weird to me. But that Super was weird. very odd, and that was the perfect football game for our style of play. And uh, that altered a lot, and then we had to kind of roll with Mason. But that's Tomlin for you, right? You know, things oh, yeah. feel right. He lets it, he lets it kind of come to fruition, and you're right. There's some Feels loyalty there, too. One way or another. Yeah. So I will make this fast on my end. I agree with you 100% with the Bengals being the most the disappointed team because I think that they do have a lot of hype. I do think that the Ravens are going to be good. I think the Browns are going to be maybe a game or two less. I don't know why I say that because, like you said, they have a stacked roster. But until they prove to me that they're not the Browns, I, I have a hard time getting excited for them. They're the Clippers of the NFL. There you go, man. They can have the roster, and they may make it to the playoffs. But it was almost like they had to go on a miracle run with Joe Flacco to even get there. And then when they got there, they lost. And so I think it's got to be the Bengals. I also, one of the things you didn't touch on was that T. Higgins, he, he didn't sign his deal for a while. It's like that wide receiver room is all jacked up and they're all trying to make more money than each other. I read a report that Chase wants to make one penny more than Justin Jefferson because he wants to be the highest paid guy and higher paid than his buddy. You know, and I'm like, listen. We saw what happened with Tyreek Hill when he started chasing the money. The Chiefs haven't lost a Super Bowl since he left. It, 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 at some point, I'm not saying you can't go make bank, but you have to sacrifice. I think both team and player have to sacrifice if you're chasing championships. Yeah, I just don't think that they're ready to go. I think Burrow is going to take a little while to get back in. The, you know, you have that surgery. Not only does he miss time last year. But he's not working out the same way. He's not throwing. I mean, people don't understand how many throws these guys are putting up in the offseason, too. He may shock me. I could be wrong. I just don't have faith in him this year. Yep. But here's where I'm at. The Ravens or Steelers, who's going to win the division? So the Ravens are, you know, well, here's it. Here's where I'm at with it. They signed Derrick Henry. Do they really did they really need to improve their running game? I don't think so. No. So what I really think they needed to do was get another uh, receiving threat. I really think they needed somebody else to go with Zay, you know, um, somebody, even if it's a third. I'm, I'm not real keen. I, I feel like they didn't get worse on offense, but I feel like they didn't get better on offense either. And I feel like they got worse on defense. So I'm actually, and I've already got it written down, I are picking the Steelers. Nice. I think the Ravens are going to be a wild card team. I think that they're going to be tough. I think that – and here's the other thing I have with, with the Ravens too. This kind of goes a little bit against what I just said. But they're, Patrick Mahomes may be the only player that you could say in the regular season is consistently as good or better than Lamar Jackson. Yes. But when you get to the playoffs – Miles apart. That Lamar Jackson that I saw play against Kansas City in the AFC Championship game last year – throwing off his back foot, not tucking the ball and running, not being dynamic. He looked like he was scared. And I, yeah, and I know at some level he's not because he's a professional and he's I mean, he is a million times more of an athlete than I would ever could even dream of. But he has not done it yet. Now, he well, still I mean, may have like enough in the regular season to win the division, but I'm going to give the Steelers a slight edge. I, I just feel like they're more hungry too. Because yeah. Lamar always says he is. The, ball, the Ravens always say they are. And then they get the number one seed. 
this year they won. They made it to the AFC Championship game. But, man, wasn't it two years in a row they lost their first game, being yeah, the number one was. seed? Yeah, yeah, and that's, I mean, that's part of the reason people think the Chiefs have been in the AFC title game and they hosted it for like four years in a row. But it wasn't always as the number one seed. Not the always number not. one seed was getting beat, and then we would be the two or the three, and then we would host it. Yep. And I just – I think – I also think there's something to be with Tomlin's age. I think he's trying to put together one more roster to really go on a run. I'm not saying he's going to retire after this year, but I, everything I'm seeing, I just think they're hungry. So I'm, yeah. I'm picking the Steelers, man. I'm I'm happy you said it, man, because sometimes I feel biased, you know, being a, a true fan. But you're right, man. Our defense only got better with – Oh, yeah. Well, and, and you took that from the Ravens. So – and a lot of times that's super weird because that doesn't really happen in, in between divisions, you know. And and I yeah. think their defense is going to be is going to be less than. And this is not the year to be less than, right? I mean, I worry about that just a little bit with the Chiefs too, with um, Snead going to the Titans because he wanted the money and right. we couldn't pay everybody, right. and we had McDuffie coming up. But we aren't. Our division is not as stacked as what your division is. No, especially on the offensive side. So yeah. I, I just think they. I mean, in division football, man, when you talk about the battle of the trenches, mm -hmm. it's so massive, right? And the truth is, I didn't even touch base on the defense, but Joey Porter, his son, JPJ, Joey Porter yeah. Jr. I really wanted the Chiefs to. Down. Yeah, I really wanted the Chiefs to draft him, and they oh, did, and he made it to the second. Round of the second I know. Pick. Oh my God, I was happy as I've ever been. Yeah, because we had like the last pick of that round, and I was like, just yeah. draft him. And they drafted, I can't remember who they picked that year, but Man, yeah, I was so disappointed. That, that, that DB1, you know, since Ike Taylor, we really oh, haven't yeah. had that DB1 to complement TJ Watt and, and, and Minka Fitzpatrick in the back. Like, we really haven't had that island we don't have to worry about since really Ike Taylor. Um, so yeah, one of my all time favorite NFL players, just so you know, was a D back for the Steelers, Rod Woodson. Rod Woodson. I love that guy, man. I, I, I do not, right? Every time I play Tech Mobile, I always try to trade for him. Yeah. Every time I was always trying to get him on the Chiefs team. So <laughs> put him Honestly, and Dale Carter yeah. together. Deion, Deion Sanders gets uh, so much love. Yeah. But, but statistically, mm -hmm. Rod Woodson was up there with Dion and oh, beating yeah. him on a lot of career stats, man. And he was a super like good punt returner and kick returner, too. Everything. I mean, he just somehow got overshadowed, and I'm not yeah. sure how you overshadow a talent like that. But all right, man, for the second time, South, I guess it's my turn to go first. Oh, yeah, yeah, it is. So I'm going to show – I'm going to go with who I predict to win the division. I'm going with the Texans. I just think they're stacked. I think they got better with, with – um, just the moves that they made. Diggs. Yeah, Diggs, they it, they solidified some backup positions. They're they're deep. And so will Stroud come down a notch? I don't know. I don't think so. I don't know how much better he's going to be, but he's a baller. I just think that they're I think they're gonna actually probably run away with it. I think the Colts have a chance to be Something maybe even a wild card team. I think they're stacked more than people realize. I I just don't know how that all plays out. I got to go with the Texans, okay? But my biggest disappointment may surprise some people. This is more on a national media level. Is I'm picking the Jaguars because everyone always tells me that Trevor Lawrence is like Trevor a Lawrence. quarterback, and they oh this is the year, this is the year, this is the year. I just don't believe it. I mean. And I think the Colts are going to finish high enough to where they're not going to be a disappointment. And I, I just think it comes down to the Jaguars. I just – and people may debate that, and I get it. That's what this is all about. Let's have a conversation. Right, right. But I'm going Texans and Jaguars. In the division, I probably care the least amount, to be yeah. honest with you. Yeah, AFC South has been uh, pretty bummish for, for a hot minute. Mm-hmm. Steve McNair days, Kevin Dyson, you know, those days, Frank Whitejack, those days are, are gone. Yeah, um, you, you notice that I didn't even bring the Titans up. Yeah. Because I just don't understand what's happening there. I'll be honest with you, it's it's confusing. Yeah, you spent you know, all they, that money to grab Snead in his prime, but you got nothing to go with it. You're not going to put any points on the board. I just don't so understand. Levi or Levy or whatever they call him. Yeah, some, Levis. Yeah. Levis, yeah, he had some uh, some flashes where you're like, okay, maybe they see some, maybe, maybe you know, who knows? You know, I get it. 
got thrown out to the Lions then. I get it too. But I just don't see enough pieces in play. Um, I, just, yeah, I just don't. So, yeah, I, I can't call that a disappointment. Um, mm -mm. Jaguars, I, I, I got to agree. Every year, it's Trevor Lawrence. He's going to get that much better. And, you know, Evan Ingram, such a great tight end. This guy can't stay on his feet. He's got no. two left feet out there. Yeah. Um, I just can't. Etienne, what a baller he is. You know, as a fantasy football enthusiast, I always want him. I never get him, you know? Yeah, their defensive line but, with, with Campbell, they, they're monsters. But never in the right moment. But this, never in the right moment. Mm -hmm. The stars just don't align. And they, it's like they win against the teams they're supposed to, but then the challenging matchups doesn't happen. Right. So I think that's the only team that you could find yourself being disappointed on. Um, I think so division, too. Right. Now, obviously, the biggest disappointment would be Houston if they somehow didn't win the division. So I go with you on the division. How much you want to bet on that? You want to take somebody else over Houston? We can make a side prop bet. I can't see it. I can't either. I just. I, I usually don't bet on things that I'm I, that I know I'm not going to win. So if you want to take somebody else, man, we can make that bet. I mean, that's the only way you would call it a disappointment, I guess. Right? Yeah. It's like, there's no way that they don't run away with this division. So my thing with Stroud is, he shocked me. Me too. I, mean, I he, never expected that. I mean, he shocked me. And then they 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 actually like built a little assembly line around him real quick in the off season. It's like, yeah. And they got Diggs some swagger. Perfect for that kid. Mm -hmm. Because now Diggs is like, let me tell you how this works. Well, let and he got tank Dell now too. That also, now you've got Diggs on the opposite side. Holy cow. I mean, you couldn't guard him by himself. Now you got all these weapons. I mean, they have three stud wide receivers. Three. And, and, and their line last year was pretty good. And I think their defense was underrated. I just don't know how they don't win that division. I honestly wouldn't be shocked if they're not the number one seed in the playoffs because I don't have much confidence in the rest of that division. So we'll yeah. see how that plays out, but I, I don't know. I'm, I'm definitely rocking with Texans. I think the Texans will, will, will probably finish top four, top five record-wise, unfortunately. Oh, I agree. I agree. Um, I don't think there's any doubt. Yeah, Saying the number one seed could be a stretch, but there is no I mean, doubt they're, they're coach, not. Yeah. What is it, DeMarco or, or their coach, bro? He's gritty. He's like a Tomlin grit. He's you know he's he a guy you want to play like for. Can, yeah, like you want to like, go to war for this man. You know that's hard to beat. Right? You see him, you're like, this guy can put a helmet on real quick, right? Yeah, let's go. Suit up, coach. I just, <laughs> yeah, I just I align with flat out everything. Um, yeah, and then the, the the Titans, nah, Jags, nah, Houston, yeah. Um, Colts, it's weird. It's like, is John is is John is JT going to come out and be JT still? I, mean, I don't know. I don't think it's possible. I hope so for my fantasy football sake because I got like the one of the last picks and he was the only decent guy left, so I had to choose him. I hope he does. He played I mean, well when he came back last year, but. How much wear and tear they're going to put on him, you know? And, and then again, same with their QB. I mean, poor dude goes down for what, week four, week five yeah. last year. And I I'm not really, sure I buy in on Richardson's hype anyway. To be honest really, with you. Yeah, and, and in his defense, I haven't really seen enough. Yeah, no, first of all, agree. it's the AFC South. I'm not watching too many games. But second of all, I was going to just say that don't <laughs> they're, they're not on my TV a whole lot. Yes, man. Yeah. So there's way too many wild cards for it to yeah. be a letdown. If they don't do, you know, numbers. Um, yeah, I agree. Both of them. All right, let's go NFC. So we'll start with the East. Just we'll do it in the same order we did the last one. Got and it. I think it's your turn to start. So NFC East used to be the division of seven and nine, and you might get the playoff ticket. Okay. Yeah. You um, might be that under 500 team. <laughs> Which I is super weird to me, but I get it. It's hey, just the way it's set up. I swear to you, uh, that used to be the case. There have been so many changes in that division that I see it different this year, actually. Yeah, I agree. Um, obviously, the Eagles did something by getting Saquon Barkley. I felt like Deion DeAndre Swift or De yeah, Swift was a beast. Um he did well for me in fantasy last year. I had him, I had him with Hurts. 
and it was like, phew, at least one of them are getting that goal line work. Right. But Saquon Barkley is, he's got hands. And they're not going to have to, like, abuse him. It reminds me of the McCaffrey to the Niner rule. Exactly. Where they don't have to abuse him. and just I can manage that him. load a little bit better. And, he, and I really think he may end up with more yards with less touches. Maybe even more touchdowns with less touches. I'm, but, yeah, you go I'm ahead. I'm agreeing I'll... with you on the average yards per carry should be through the roof. Mm-hmm. And he'll probably have 50-plus catches this year for Great. probably close to 800 yards receiving. This may because be the resurgence for sure. This is He's a stud, coming. but look, who, what did he have to work with last year? No, I mean, nothing. He had no line, no nothing. really other offensive threats, and he still ran for over 1,000 yards, if I'm not mistaken. He's insane. He's an insane talent. That's huge, though, because now you're looking at play action, the option yeah. reads they already do. And look, A.J. Brown's been A.J. Brown. You're not going to be able to do nothing but contain him, if you will. This is Devontae Smith's third year. Yeah. I think he – or his fourth year now, right? Third year? Four. Year four? I think it's that's, year four. That's a big step for him. Yeah. And then Dallas Goder – or Gobert or – Yeah. Middle Toronto Goddard. He is – I always say Goddard, but I Goddard. don't always pronounce everything correctly anyway, so. He's one of those tight ends. Mm-hmm. I mean, dude, he kicked off Ertz off the team. Zach Ertz, dude. Like yeah. he overtook that role. So, you know, I know yeah, that guy had to go to Arizona. <laughs> right? Get like out Zach of here. Ertz, dude. Zach Ertz was like top three tight ends in the league oh, for a yeah. minute, dude. Yep. So, you know, I know he's getting older a little bit too, but still, man, I mean, you look at that O line, receiving core, beast on defense still. Their defense, I mean, yeah. slot, slay. I mean, dude, it, it, that looks like a monstrous team. Now, The biggest appointment has to be – biggest disappointment has to be the Cowboys to me. Okay. Now, now the reason I say this is because we already know what takes place. They never really make that push at the right time in the playoffs to make that, right? So, again, with Dak being, like, kind of a make or break type year and C.D. Lamb uh, year and you, you know, no longer have Pollard but you brought Elliott back, they just feel like it's just – Yeah. That, that organization, Jones, I don't think he really wants to push the effort without controlling everything, and I think that that's kind of a thorn in his side. Um, who am I that to was, judge? But, or 20 years ago, but it doesn't work anymore. Yeah, I, so so I think you're, you're disappointed as a Cowboy fan because you're tired of saying this is our year, mm-hmm. whereas someone like the, the Washington football team, they've made some killer moves. Eckler's yeah. now their running back. I mean, they've made – Arguably, they're, they're they're underrated at this point. So you can't yeah. have a letdown if you're underrated in my No, because they're going to improve. I just don't know why they're how going many to games. Improve. Yeah. How much we don't know. They don't make playoffs. It's not a letdown, right? So, right. So can't call them in it. And then I'm really confused with the Giants organization at this point. <laughs> what's happening with the Giants? I do not understand. I don't what's understand. Going it. On. Like Daniel Jones in, Daniel Jones out. Dan- Wait, hold up. What? No yeah. more Saquon. I, I don't, Neighbors is basically your number one. Your number one wide receiver is a rookie at this point. I get it if you have to put a rookie in as a number two. I mean, the Chiefs did it last year with Rice, right? By the, At least by the end of it, he was kind of the number one. You could become a number one, but there's exactly. no way your rookie should be your number one, right? Not like opening Pickens, day. Yeah, George Pickens was you know the number two to Deontay Johnson getting 100-plus receptions mm-hmm. two years in a row before he took over that role. Right I don't show, think right? anybody so, knows what the Giants are doing. I mean, yeah. they see it on the national pundits too. They're, it's almost like they don't even talk about them because what, what is there to talk about? You can't let that – that can't be a letdown again. No, they're winning – or they're losing the division. Divi- their number – they're last in the division. Yeah. Then I think the biggest question is, is the, are the commanders going to finish ahead of the Cowboys? Which one's going to finish second? That's where yeah. I'm at with it. Yeah, I mean, I can totally see the commanders doing that. Mm-hmm. Especially again, they've made some, you know, even even uh, what's the what's their running back's name? Because Eckler's not even their number one at this point, technically. Uh, uh they got, out. yeah, they have Robinson, I think, Robinson. and and uh, but they also have their wide receiver. I always mess pronounce his name too. Like I always want to say Jeremy Macklin because I'm a Missouri guy. But it's like McLaren. McLaren, I think, yeah. Yeah. McLaren and Scary Terry's still there too, yeah. right? Yeah. 
Yeah, so it's like they're they're gonna have some weapons now. How is the rookie? Also, I think do? they got Mike Williams. Uh, Mike Williams went to the Jets. Oh yeah, that's right. He's with yeah. the Bears. Yeah. Um, I was thinking Which, all these charges scattered. He could yeah. be good, but if he can stay healthy, that's I yeah, really like the Chiefs to get him. But I think they were worried he'd get injured, and then there you're out fifteen million dollars for a guy. That's yeah, well, that's why we wouldn't pay for that. Yeah. Our so you're going like Eagles and Cowboys. Eagles yeah, win. Go Cowboys. Cowboys biggest disappointment. Eagles win the division. Not much of a mystery there, but I think that division's a lot more competitive than it's ever been. And oh I yeah. I think it's uh. It's not equivalent to the AFC North type football, but it's like top three right now. In my it opinion. might be a little bit more ugly, but those games are going to be fun to watch yeah. for sure. And yeah. just I'll flash it up there. You can pause it whenever we do it so you can't <laughs> see the rest. I picked the exact same thing. Let's go. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm just with you. I'm not going to run down all the same reasons, yeah. you know, and bore people to death. But the Eagles are the cream of the crop. They just are. They're yeah. studs. Um, I think they got to be one of the top favorites to even make the Super Bowl out of the NFC. Top three for sure. And the Cowboys, when you when you start your offseason where we're all in and then you don't do anything, I'm sorry. Your fan base is going to be super disappointed. I've never been a Cowboys fan, so I'm not going to be disappointed. But if you're still claiming to be America's team, you've got to be the biggest disappointment in that division. So all I right, so we're gonna that. we're gonna go to the NFC or NFC West. And I guess that is my turn to start. I think the winner of the division is the Niners. May still be one of the most complete rosters in all of football and one of the most well-coached teams in all of football. Their defense, you know, their studs. Um, Of course, I would draw a blank, but that that linebacker, if he doesn't blow his Achilles out running onto the field in the Super Bowl, Greenlaw. If Greenlaw Greenlaw doesn't doesn't blow his Achilles out running – out just for you know just to take the field Mm. that second half could be different that guy was Mm. a man on a mission in that game and i'm not so sure there is he's gotta be right up there with the best of the best as a linebacker and they're just top five in the nfl right now gotta be gotta be right and i might even rank him higher than that i might even go top three if he's healthy um achilles injuries hard to come back from i'm from experience uh, my brother who's on the podcast, he blew out his Achilles when he was playing college basketball. Mm. He was able to make a comeback, but it was probably a good 16, 18 months before he was like 100%, you know. Um, th- and that was a little while ago. So medicine has come around and things. And these are pro athletes. Right. But I still think the Niners are going to run away with that division. I just do. I Once again, I don't see how the Seahawks are a disappointment because I don't have that much hope for them. Um, I don't know what the Cardinals are doing when it comes to what's happening in the West. They have Kyler Murray, but then they ship off good players and they bring in, you know, decent guys, but it never just seems to mesh ever. Mm -hmm. It's gotta be a coaching thing. I, or the front office doesn't know how to put talent together. I don't know what it is. So with Aaron Donald retiring and I apologize to you, Holly. But I think the Rams are going to be the biggest disappointment in the division. Based on, I still think there's a really good chance that they're second, but I don't think they're going to the playoffs. I don't, I don't think they have what it's going to take to go to the playoffs. Now, I will say there is the chance they do, because if something happens to one of the, you know, somebody on the Seahawks team, they might be able to sweep them twice. I think they're beating the Cardinals twice. So there's four wins. They don't necessarily have the toughest schedule because they didn't finish first in their division last year. So there is that outside chance to make the playoffs. But I, I think I got to go with the Rams at, on, on the disappointment side. So okay. now you're up. What do you think? So I definitely agree the most complete roster in the game. They even kept Ayuk, so they don't yeah. have really much of losses that they have to in, in, endure. And the best running back in the business – I'm going to say it's not a super high or hot take to go. The 49ers have one of the best rosters in all the yeah. football, right? Like, okay. Yeah. yeah, but it's, I mean, but hey, dude, for some of the, the fans of your show that don't watch sports like that, dude, it's obvious to it's us. True. It may not be that obvious to them, right? So, yeah, I mean, it's probably I agree, not I obvious to Holly because she thinks the Rams are going to win the division. So we'll see. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm sorry, Holly. I got to yeah. go Niners to win it all, <clears throat> to win the division. What I will say, though, 
I think there is a disappointment with the Seahawks, actually, because here's why. You know, they try to write me off, but I ain't right back. You know, Geno Smith now has hype. It's true. Now, he has been playing good to deserve the hype. Don't get it misconstrued. Better than I ever thought he would. Better than I ever thought he would as well. Mm -hmm. Now, they're being very consistent also, right, where they still have Metcalf and they still have Tyler Lockett. Yep. Um, Kenneth, you know, the third man, he's a great running back, only going to get a little bit better this year. Where did but that guy come from? Yeah, yeah like, honestly, I, I would never him. expected that either, but he's Me a stud. Either. I thought Rashard Penny was going to be the guy, to be honest. Me too. I drafted him last year, and that yeah. was dumb. <laughs> so, I got him like week two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he came out of nowhere, and he and he and he's good. Yeah. So, you know, all around, tight end game on point, defense always on point. The Legion of Doom, that, that, that stadium, just their fans, you know, they don't got much but rainy days out there in Seattle. So true, it's like true. stealing football to them out there, man. They are in it to win it. So that home field advantage in the right times, and, and I think that they're they're looked at to be, you know, third in the division, but still possibly winning, you know, getting a playoff spot. Yeah. I, I, I just I, – I don't – I don't see them having as good of a year as people would would say, right? I think they finished nine and six. Uh, I'm sorry, ten and six last. No, no, no. Ten, ten and seven. seven last year. Yeah, I think so. They did finish ten and seven last year, which was shocking. I think they digress. In other words, right? So that's okay. a disappointment. You know, you got your quarterback now. I you think know, that's Joe, fair. Pete yeah. Carroll, USC coach. I love him. One of the best coaches of all time. Honest to God, man. Mm -hmm. As USC childhood growing up, man, USC football was it. Yeah. So he's stepped into a new role. He's still part of the team, but he kind of stepped into some weird role. Yeah. I it's just time that, to step off the sideline, I think, for him. Yeah, and I think that yeah. does play a massive role into why they mm -hmm. digress. I can see that. I think that you could actually talk me into that pretty easily. And so here's the thing with the Rams that's sneaky. Cooper Cup came back from a major injury True. last year, right? That's his first year kind of getting accustomed to it, and out of nowhere they get blessed by Puka. That is insane, by the way. I too. mean, a number one on any other roster, if you will. I would have killed to have him on the Chiefs team last year. Oh, my God. We need selling Puka and George Pickens together. Yeah. So, receiving core is there. Yeah. Um, Matt Stafford is... Is he going to be the next ageless wonder? I mean, that's what I was going to say, right? It's like he came a little after the Rivers and he came a little after the Bends. Yeah. He still got a few years left. Well, he's tough as nails. Even if you watch and any of his old stuff in Detroit, man, that guy, he'd have like ligaments hanging on by a thread and he's just still going out there and he dude, would do everything Drew he has. Brees, Drew Brees, Matt Stafford, and Big Ben yeah. would be sitting there competing for – most yards in the season, you know, total yards in the season at some point in the fantasy realm, right? It's like, yeah, there's some things that you look at with Matt Stafford. That injury might have preserved a year, if you will. It could you have. Know? Yeah. So, and you look at the consistency he displayed in Detroit, bro. Yeah. I can't count him out. His wife might be a little getting... bit insane, but. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we won't get into that story, but holy cow. When I read that, I was like, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> What is happening here? What's going on? <laughs> yeah, I, think, I feel like it's her off-season mission every year to make him look silly. I swear to you, bro. I swear to you. Yeah. Yeah, I see the Rams actually um, not being a disappointment because I don't think people have them too high. But I think people have them contending uh, to make a playoff push. I think that's fair. I think that's – that's the only time I think I'll go back and look at it. I'll, I'll have a graphic up, but I think it's the only time we've disagreed. But that yeah. you could seriously talk me into that because I almost went that way. But in my brain, it was super funny to make fun of Holly's team. Push Holly, right? So, yeah. You know, you got to push her around a little yeah. bit. Let's let, here you go, Holly. Ready? Yeah. Oh, you lost oh no, she lost again. <laughs> you taking her mojo for sure. Oh no, she'll get me back, dude. I, you know, that's the game, dude. You yeah. Know, you well, that's why I don't talk a lot of trash, man. Because every time I do, I get crushed. Get crushed. So I'm just like, all right, I'm gonna be humble. All right, so the so NFC real. North. NFC North. So it's gonna be an interesting division. It's interesting. 
it's interesting for so many ways, man. Like, yeah, the Vikings lose a lot, and then is it Sam Darnold secretly? Yeah. I don't know, man. I I get it. Justin Jefferson's a beast, and and you know, roster wise, they're I don't know. Addison's beast. But I yeah. don't know. You know, Sam Darnold's never really had weapons like that, I guess. I know. Like, this could be a breakout season for him. Right, or we're going to find a, out he is who we thought he was. Yeah, I could see him being a good game manager, though. You know, yeah. with a little extra oomph. Yeah. But I don't also see it at the same time. So I think that that's going to be probably the biggest disappointment because you still got Jay Jetta and, and, yeah. and all these players that are just defensive sacked. I mean, I think they – yeah, I think that's the biggest disappointment, I guess. Okay. Um, Who do you think is going to win? Yeah, I'm, 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 I mean, I got to go Detroit. Okay. I think Detroit's going to, I mean, they got the double headed running back, right? So mm -hmm. they're stacked there. Montgomery is a great running back and he doesn't even have to be anymore. So that's kind of odd. Yeah, true. You know, it's like, he's like kind of the one B almost now. It's weird. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I got to go Detroit. Because man, they 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 they've been contending even up last year, man. They they were contending, so yeah. And I don't Gibbs, see too much of a fall off. I think Gibbs is probably going to be better than he was. Uh, we saw him them early last year, first game of the season. They didn't give him many touches, but man, when that kid touched the ball, he was electric. That's he's, why I feel like he's going to be the one A this year, to be honest. Yeah, he's a little be banged up, maybe going into week one this year, but at the same time. I think it, he's going to explode in a sophomore season. I don't think he's the guy that's going to take a step back in a sophomore season. There's no season. way. There's no so, way. Well, I got, and, I got to and, tell and you and that. I mean, dude, they got a good – dude, the QB is the perfect home for him. He's in a dome. He's feeling the same. I'm still waiting for Jared Goff, though, to, like, fall apart because he was so good with the Rams, and he just, like, went away. Jared Goff, I don't – I'm waiting for him to kind of, like, fall down, but he doesn't seem to. And No, he's got heart, man. Yeah, their coach is a risk taker too. Uh, maybe too much. So, will he learn Here's from that? Here's the deal. Here's the deal. He's a salt. I mean, he's like top notch coaching. He's well, I want him to coaches. go to. I want. I want him to go to war with him. Like, I want yeah. him on my team. You yeah, know? <laughs> exactly. I was just about to say he's one of those Demarcos, right? Where you just get yeah. wound up with him. It's like a young Pete Carroll, even how he's just got so much energy. Yeah. He made such controversial calls last year that cost his team dearly. Uh oh in the playoffs especially. But, but I do believe he's going to stick to that recipe. And I think that sometimes that cookie won't crumble that way. And that's no, the that's biggest true. difference of it all. So yeah, Motor City gets a good pump this year. I think uh, they went deep enough in the yeah, I think they I think they won the division. I go I'm going to agree with you on that 100%. I think the Lions are going to win. I do think that, you know, that's a really really division that's kind of up in the air because the Lions, I think Jordan Love, he's kind of like, I want to prove to everybody that last year wasn't a fluke and their roster is pretty stout. I don't think that people are probably giving Green Bay enough credit, but I don't think they got enough to overcome the Lions. The Bears, to me, are a very interesting team. They made probably more big name acquisitions than any other team in football, but they're going to start a rookie is a number one overall pick who has talent. Okay, I'm not saying he doesn't have talent, but how's that going to mix? How's that going to work? Because this game is way faster than what the college game was. And if we're being honest, any time he played a big-time school last year, they didn't, they didn't fare so well. I'm not saying he had horrible games, but his team didn't necessarily fare so well. I'm going to lean for the Bears to be the disappointment in this division because of the national hype. I think the people in Chicago believe they're going to win the division. And I, it's hard for me to say they're going to be the biggest disappointment because I also do think that there is a chance if everything clicks, they could, they could take that division. I just can't pick a rookie quarterback to, to throw in a team that I saw in the lions last year to go against a Jordan Love in the pack like they will have to. And I think the Vikings are going to be number four. That's why I didn't really pick them to be the disappointment because I'm not expecting a whole lot out of them. 
So I'm going to go with the Bears and say that they're going to be the biggest disappointment because they're not going, to, in my eyes, win the division. And I think that division is tough enough that there will be enough games lost between the teams. I don't think they make the playoffs. I think they're going to be the last team from the outside looking in. I really do. You know, you have to look at your division because you play those teams twice, right? So if you are a Kansas City, a lot of times, think about it, they didn't get a lot of credit because they beat the Broncos twice. They beat the Raiders twice. Everybody's like, "Uh, who cares? Maybe they split with the Chargers, but sometimes they'd go 6-0 in their division. That's six wins. So now you have a really high seed, and people are like, well, yeah, but look who they played. And then you find out, okay, they're a really good team, right? But I think sometimes when you're beating each other the way I think that division is going to beat each other, I think the Bears are going to be that team that's from looking from the outside in, or from the outside looking inside. So I'm going to go with them as the biggest disappointment, but they could also be the biggest shock because right. they added so many names to that roster. It's insane. But yeah, I mean, dude, you got what's Keenan Allen have left too? Also, like Chargers let him go. And he's right, been but he a actually had staple. a really good year before he that heel injury, dude. Agreed. He actually, he's been I on my like fantasy I, team for like the last three years because I see him play the Chiefs and I'm like, that dude's a stud, you know. Yeah, I mean, I I, I truthfully feel like the weather is what's gonna mess them up. You got Keenan Allen from yep. the Colt from San Diego or LA. Yeah, and then you got Caleb from USC. Yeah. And then you're kind of throwing them in December football, dude. In December Chicago. Football in Chicago, bro. In the wind. I don't think they're accustomed to the windy city cold when you get hit. It, fuck, it's a difference, right? Dude, I'm telling you, people that have never played the game before don't understand. When you get rocked, when your body is like it's frozen, cold? Uh, it's, it's a different feeling for sure. It's not. Yeah, yeah. You, you don't want to live for that moment, bro. Exactly. So that's where I kind of see the issue with them. Again, they got they got a, a Swift. Yeah. They got a you know Keenan Allen. You know they got mm-hmm. they got position players for days. They got the position players for days. And but I think again, DJ that, Moore is like the most underrated top. DJ top Moore, is the, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like he, everyone knows he's good, but you don't put him at the level of Chase or Jefferson or you know any of those guys. But I don't think he's like like one B. And, you know, instead of being 1A, but I don't think he gets enough national hype for that. But he's good. I'll tell you, dude, I went against DJ Moore and this is the game he caught three TDs against us. And yep. I'm telling you like this, man, if that's your 1B or your 2, you're stacked. Yeah. Or you're if that- Keenan Allen ends up being your 2, like what? You're stacked. <laughs> yeah. So, again, their position players are on point because – which would you know, help a, a rookie quarterback, right? I mean, that's that's can't hurt. And so. and Khalil Herbert stepped up every time Montgomery went down before yeah. Montgomery went to Detroit, and the dude's a beast, bro. So they yeah. got like a one B one A for for they, my whole thing is is they have the position, the, the key players in key positions, and they have depth. So yes, I, I I just can't put them on disappointment because it's the rookie and it's like that can't hurt me. But I also can't put them in like you're winning the division because there's those variables, right? Yeah. Where the Packers, for me, Jordan Love shocked me. I feel like Green Bay just knows how to find QBs. It's like, oh, Aaron it's Rogers, super weird. You're coming it's, into Brett Favre. It's Brett's almost unfair. Yeah, it's how we are with receivers. Mm-hmm. It's like Aaron Rodgers, you're coming in for Brett Favre. Everyone's like, what are you doing? Yeah. Hey, good move. Yeah. Then it's like, hey, Aaron Rodgers, you're out. Dude, we got Jordan Love. What are you doing? Damn, good move. Yeah. So it's hard to say disappointment because I still just can't believe they're even doing as good as they're doing. But yep. they got rid of Aaron Jones, and that was a little odd to me. That was odd to me, too. And then A.J. Dillon just went down, too. A.J. Then it's like, yeah. okay, so now I'm like – and then the receivers have been lackluster for, like, five years. Well, Ever I can't – Devontae Adams left. Yeah, and I can't even tell you uh, Watson – Christian Watson, their wide receiver. Yeah, Christian he hasn't Watson. been drafted in any of my fantasy leagues yet. Well, do you know why, dude? He had like three touchdowns in one game, and then I know it's super inconsistent, game, right? So but when he catches it, it's a touchdown. Yeah. So like, who's he going to catch it against? Right? Is it going to be against those games where you need it, or are you going to already be up twenty eight exactly. points, or are you going to no be down twenty eight points? 
No, I see that in baseball a lot. It's like, okay, this guy's got 40 home runs, but when does he hit him? Does yeah. he hit him when you're up eight to one or you're down 10 to two? Those yeah. home runs to me don't matter. Don't right. So, yeah. All right. So we're not too far off there. I no. think maybe the one, most interesting division in football is the NFC uh, South. It is now. Yeah. So Kirk Cousins going to Atlanta he, makes it very interesting. I agree. So who you got? Um, I, I mean, Kirk Cousins is like one of those, you know, ballers, man. I mean, he's – you like that? You know, he's gritty, dude. He is gritty. And he doesn't look very athletic, but he always gets the job done. He's gritty. Yeah. And their running back is ridiculous. You know, I think Kyle Pitts, the tight end, has the sneakiest year ever because his athleticism is dumb. And I think that's a perfect thing for a Kirk Cousins. That's I think fun Cousins like that. will be able to use him better than they've had a quarterback in the past for sure. Yeah. yeah. So I I got to go. That's I got to go. That's the division. Here's why. I think I have to go Bucks being the disappointment because they're like main field. Yay. And then it's like they still have Godwin. They, you know, they, they – Evans. You still got Mike Evans. You know, the, the running back is like, you know, people drafted him way too high, in my opinion. Rashard White hasn't done nothing too crazy. Yeah, I've stayed away from him in every draft. I've stayed away from him <laughs> in every draft, you know. And Baker, I, as a Steelers fan, I watched Baker. I actually like the kid, dude. He's a very yeah. likable guy. Like, his commercials were funny, bro. He's a likable dude. He loves his team. He's very passionate. The locker room loves him. He's gritty. He fights through everything but he hasn't put together like a full-blown like this dude's the a starter in this league even he definitely hasn't in my eyes done it two years in a row to makes me go oh yeah you're gonna be able to count on that guy now maybe this is the year he proves us all wrong but i'm with you i got the bucks as the biggest disappointment yeah and Panthers, i can't get disappointed by them i can't they made some plays but but like there's some Secretly, they're a good team. They got you, the names, but I feel like they always get them on the downtrend. If that yeah, but sense. Deontay Johnson was a big acquisition. Yeah, that was a big. Route runner. But they're they already right, paid a totally bunch of money to Thielen, and it's like you're putting a lot of your money in the same that. room, you know? Yeah. And, and I don't know about that, but I went with the Falcons too, man. I, I do think that Kirk Cousins is going to bring a different dimension they have. I actually think they have one of the a, a very underrated defense that – there's enough youth on it that I think there's going to be improvement there. They don't have that standout national name on their defense, but they always seem to be in the right place at the right time. And yeah. for a team that, you know, finished, I can't even remember the record from last year, but it was basically like 500 or maybe yeah, a couple I think games it was below. Eight seven or nine yeah. Seven or something. But oh, I yeah, think I'm that they did make the jump. Because I also, that division is not. That's just, it's, no, it's kind of like what we're talking about with the AFC West. It's not yeah. that strong. So you might pick up five wins in the division, and maybe the Panthers get you one day or the Bucks get you on one game, a home and home, you know. But yeah, I'm going to go Falcons and Bucks also, man. I think yeah. that that one's fairly easy. Yeah. So in all of this, I think we had two differences. That's it, yeah. too. That yeah, must just have, mean that we're super smart. We're intelligent creatures. Yeah, we're, we're, we're all on the same wavelength here. Uh, so. God put us together and was like, here's a good brain for you. Here's a good brain. <laughs> there you go, for sure. So oh, my favorite really part, man, rapid fire. Are Let's you ready? It. Yeah, okay. I've only seen it on before, so I'm excited to be the one getting the questions. MVP. MVP, I'm going to go with Jalen Hurts. Hurts? Yeah. Hey, I, I wasn't expecting that. I think this yeah. is his year, man. All right. Super Bowl matchup. Hart's telling me the Steelers on the AFC. And on the NFC, I'm going to go with the Eagles. I think we see a little freeway Super Bowl-ish. Wow. Okay. That will be big for those that that – State of Pennsylvania, never yeah, been yeah, there before. Sorry, Pennsylvania, the state never been of there Philadelphia. Before. Yeah, no, I think that uh, that would be big. Who and who wins? Steelers. Steelers win. Yeah. Wow. I think I swear to you guys, man. I I, I know it's I'm, it looks silly to say. I should have probably not worn this 
so I did take him serious. But I'm telling you right now, See, little Easter eggs. That's, I, that's a little hint to my friend. Little hint. You're smart. I didn't learn from this. The Steelers' defense will be the number one scoring points allowed, yards given up. I'm telling you right now, and that's why people think it's all about the offense nowadays. But it's it, this is the year where the defense. Remember, they're making a lot of changes. Yeah. And then you even look at the kickoff rules. I, I think the Steelers. 100%, dude. I know it's all hard, but I, I swear to you, I think they have the perfect offensive line. They have the perfect trenches on both sides. They have the perfect defense to complement the perfect, even if it is Russell Wilson, a winner in the Super Bowl before. You got people that have done it now on your team, too. So, yeah, Steelers, Eagles, Steelers win. Okay, so you got Hurts as the MVP. You have Steelers, Eagles. You have Steelers winning. I couldn't agree with you any less but this is not about me it's about you and i still love you all right so three more I love you. favorite nfl memory oh man that's hard yeah, it's um, hard my favorite nfl memory like it, it doesn't it, have to be like this is you this is anybody else ghost's favorite nfl memory man i gotta go back to Antoine Randall L throwing a touchdown. Oh, wow. Lions wow. against the Seahawks because that's our first Super Bowl I saw with my eyes. Um, I haven't heard that name in a off. long time. Yeah, I mean, he's a quarterback time. in college and high yeah. school. You know, he left hander, threw it up to Heinz Ward to beat the Seahawks in the Super Bowl. Yeah. That was that was my, my first moment that just had such a big impact because that was the first time I got to watch an NFL team that I rooted for since a kid win. But I do have to say, the best all-time moment, like, ever, ever for me, would get trumped by the James Harrison 100-yard interception for a touchdown. Oh, yeah. Even as Hard. a non-Steelers fan, man, that was awesome. Because that mean, guy man, was a beast for so many years. Like, I can't think of very many other people that deserved a moment like that in a game like that. So, And it changed the entire dynamic of that game. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. But I mean, that game had the toe touch by Santonio too. I mean, there's just been some epic moments as a Steeler fan. Um, but I, I have a lot of good memories, man. I mean, I got to meet Deontay Johnson and, and uh, George Pickens, Tomlin when they played oh. the the Ram uh, the Rams this last year. Um, I posted a video on, on X at one point, but um, yeah, man, I have I got I, my hats are all signed by him now. That was Sweet. a cool moment off the field, you know, you getting go. to see them. Like, I felt like a little kid again. I don't really get to uh, starstruck. starstruck like me right? either. Yeah, me either. I, don't, I don't idolize or get starstruck like that, but it was just that's, cool to face-to-face cool. face see him and uh, get their autographs. And, like, you know, he, he, I have a video of him, like, driving a, a car on my phone, and it was like, yeah, that's, that's my favorite receiver right now. So Yeah, that's cool, in life, man. In real life moment that, the other moments for sure on the field. Okay. Do you have a favorite stadium, NFL stadium? I don't know how many you've visited, but any of them that you like to like, I'm gonna say rather so watch fi. a game? I'm going to say okay. SoFi. Um, that I was game curious. I'm, yeah, that game I'm referring to, um, I got the VIP of VIP, so there's like a little glass that's in front of you. But okay. the VIP section, you go underground, and you're oh. almost in a baseball dugout where the field is like up to your sternum. Weird. So I've you not walk seen that underground. Before. You walk up to the stern. It's literally like chest high, right? So you're there, and the football players are up. And you're on the field, just straight on the field. It's it's open, so it's air. You know, the sides are open only. It's a dome yeah. ceiling, but it's open on the side, so you get air. And hmm. it, it's, you know, it's brand new. It is state-of-the-art. And, um, yeah, man, I mean, it's. That's my favorite stadium for sure. Without a so doubt. it's the real deal. So a guy from the Midwest that sees it on TV and goes, eh, I'm not sure it's the real deal. Bro, okay. it's it's stunning. Like, okay. It's stunning. It's in the worst area in, in, in Cali. Of course. <laughs> you know, you got to run <laughs> run through this street and jog through this street. You can walk on, 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 on a couple streets over here. But, uh, yeah, bro, that stadium is like, wow. Okay. So – I have to ask this, although I think I already know the answer. Favorite NFL game? Favorite NFL game? Mm -hmm. That like I've been to? 
No, just like you've seen on television. Just at, at in general, oh. the game. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I'm going to uh, rate. Damn, you're going. So it doesn't have to be my team. Doesn't have to be. None of these memories have to be your team or any of these thoughts. I know, but you know, as a big tar, right? When well, I figured you'd college. instantly go to the Super Bowl with. Yeah, I mean, you know, but I gave them their moments already, right? Okay, I mean, okay. Plays, if you will. That's fair. Um, I'll tell you, my least one was the Packers and the Steelers. That was my least favorite. Oh, I, um, yeah, I'm sure. I wasn't even going to bring it up, man. Yeah. Well, you, you went there on your own, so I can't be held accountable, okay? That one hurt. I'm going to be honest. That one hurt. Especially because uh, one of my favorite artists, Lil Wayne, made a song about cutting Palomala's hair off and uh, oh, I predicting about it. that. Yeah, yeah he's a cheese that he's a Packer fan, Louisiana dude from from Packer fan somehow. But yeah, yes. so my favorite NFL game ever. Yeah, I mean, dude, we've had so many crazy rivalry games. I'm gonna go with uh, Ravens and Steelers, of course. I want to say it was Sunday Night Football, but it, it was definitely prime time. Okay, where. Palomalo had this crazy um, interception dive secured. I mean, it was just one of those epic plays. Is that the like, one where he like dove, caught it, rolled at the same time? Yeah, they, I don't remember even, the game, but I remember the play. They didn't even want to call it an interception. It was a yeah. Well, it didn't look like it was humanly possible. I can remember to this day going, "There's no way that guy caught that ball." Insane. Yeah. But, but. Antonio Brown had this one play where he's getting his face mask ripped to off. Yeah. And he's stretching to the goal line to beat the Ravens was 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 insane. Because that was like to get to postseason, we lose that game, we're done. Yep, yep. Sometimes the ramifications of the game magnify it in our yeah. own minds, especially as fans. Like to other people, it's like oh, that's not that big of a deal. But the ramifications play on your emotions, and then you're they like, do, man. "Oh man, you remember forever." Maybe they even do, the man. sounds and the smells because it's just in, ingrained in you. So, a hundred percent, man. So, so I got to share mine with you on I that. Normally, know. I don't answer these questions, but I do have to share. For the longest time in my life, it was Joe Montana to Willie Davis, Chiefs at Broncos Monday Night Football. I was a freshman in college. It was on. We didn't get a lot of TV channels uh, were in the dorms where I was at, but right. it was on. And I can just remember thinking, Elway got us again. He drove yeah. down the field, got us, but then he left too much time. And Montana hit Willie Davis and a little kind of slide route there. Touchdown, yep. game over, we win. I was right. so excited forever about it. Epic game. Until the Chiefs played the Bills in the playoffs in the 13-second game. I have never had roller coaster amount of emotions throughout the entire game, man. Like, oh, we're winning. Oh, we're losing. Oh, we're going to win. No, we're going to lose. And I mean, it was back and forth all game. And was, we would get like comfortable and they'd be right back. And we'd get a little bit and they'd be right back. And then what people forget about that game, too, is the Chiefs went down, hit Tyreek. Didn't even look like it was going to be a touchdown. Right. He just cut two guys. Burners. Burned them all the way to the end zone. Burners. Josh Allen gets the ball back with like a minute 30. Goes down, hits Gabe Davis for 13 seconds to take the lead back. Like, and I you're thought, thinking it's over at that I point. I thought yeah. it was over when Hill scored the touchdown. Yeah. Like, I literally thought there's no way he's going to come. We'd already given up, like, I think, three touchdowns to Gabe right. Davis. There's no way it's happening again, right? Because we didn't have the best defense that year. But Not it wasn't slouch, right? It wasn't the worst. No, but no. there's no way you let that guy get number four. And with 13 seconds left, they hit him in the end zone. And I'm just like defeated. Defeated. Yeah. It's, it's disgusting. It is like ramif talk about ramifications. Like it doesn't get any bigger than that. And then they hit Hill and they hit Kelsey and they kicked that long field. Somehow, it's not like it was a gimme field goal either. It wasn't. But and then is a yeah, he's a stud, man. Stud. He, I don't think he gets enough credit, but he doesn't. Then they get the ball. And they just go right down the field, hit Travis Kelsey touchdown. Like over. And it's over. Thank goodness, because I really feel like if the Bills got the ball point. again, they're gonna go down and score because the defenses are trashed. I mean, that game know? changed the history of the defense uh, of the way NFL playoffs is now. Well, and I will tell you, as a Chiefs fan, I'm gonna throw this out at the end just in case nobody's still listening, maybe they won't be so mad at me. 
we've got a lot of flack from that, right? Like, well, if the Bills would have got, they would have scored. You know, blah, blah, blah. I get it. But the year before that, Tom Brady did the same thing to us. They got the ball in the playoffs. Yeah. And we didn't get Mahomes to touch it. got the ball back. No, because both defenses were exhausted. Yeah. There's a different level of energy in those last few minutes of the game that you lay it all out on the line. And then when it ends up tied, yeah, it's kind of weird. Like, everybody gives – um, the coach last year overtime, they take the ball. And I think a lot of people think they took the ball because their defense was exhausted. But in a situation where both teams get the ball, I I want to defer every time. Every time I want to see what you're going to do because if you don't score, I don't have to take as many risks. Right. If you kick a field goal, I know that, okay, I don't have to go for it on fourth down here. I can kick the field goal or whatever it may be. And if you do score, you saw the Chiefs had to go for it on fourth down twice because they knew they had to get points. And so it was, it's was. it been insane. But I think that there's – it's just – if you sat down in a room of 10 NFL fans and you asked them all what was the best game you've ever seen or this or that, you're going to have 10 different answers. Sure. And I think that's what makes the NFL so cool. For sure. So. I mean, dude, when you talk about, like, moments or games, like, that was what you felt is kind of what I felt in uh, the Cardinal game. Because we were, you know, going into half, we're looking like we're, they're going to take a two-possession two lead. Yeah. It's like, oh, my God. And then we come back and score a touchdown. It's like, whoa, wait a second. Then Larry Fitzgerald catches that slant, takes it yeah. to the house, and you're just like. Stud, by the way. Stud. One of all-time greats. By far. I he gets a lot of praise. I still don't think he gets enough. He doesn't get enough still somehow, right? I mm-hmm. swear to you. I agree with that. But that game was the same way for me. I remember that I had a friend at my house, and uh, we had a $500 bet. That was a lot of money at the time for me. You oh, know? yeah, yeah. I straight up just gave him the $500 when Fitzgerald did that. I was like, that's it, man. Here's five bills. And he was talking so much. Ooh, I was just like, oh, my God. I wanted to put a hole in the wall, you know? Yep. And then, you know, Big Ben just – and San Antonio Holmes, just, he got both. I see his toes are down. Oh, my. Like, he's just so much. Maybe the greatest him. catch in Super, in Bowl, Super Bowl history, history. For sure. I mean, yeah, for sure. I can't That's, even really it's think of. It's expiring, too. Well, I give him the, the I, even in, uh, like, Beckham's one-handed grab, I still think that catch is way better than Beckham's one-handed grab. That was to have that kind of body control well, in that body moment. body control. The placement of the ball is out of bounds, only where you can catch it. And yeah. your momentum's carrying you, and you still can somehow glide that those those tiny little tippy toes in. People don't understand in how the athletic Super Bowl those guys when are. You're like already adrenaline's numb. Yeah. Like there's no way. Yeah, on Monday Night Football, prime time. Uh, yeah. No one knows who you are yet, and you do this crazy catch. Difficulty, yes. But do that in a Super Bowl. Yeah. When the game's on the line. Yeah, hey, I'm, I'm with you. I mean, yeah. I mean, Insane. that has to be the best catch in NFL, Super Bowl NFL history for sure, bro. Well, listen, man, I really appreciate your time. I really appreciate, appreciate you coming you. on. Man, I, I enjoy the conversations. I enjoy That's listening cool. to you. I enjoy the banter back and forth on X. <laughs> and I think that at some point down the road, we, maybe we get together, we do this again on a completely different subject. Because Love as it. we were talking about off camera, I think we see eye to eye on a bunch of stuff, man. And sometimes people like to see drama or differencing of opinions and things like that. Sure. I also think sometimes it's very refreshing to see two guys have a civil conversation, even if they do agree on a lot of things, because you still may bring up points that I would forget to bring up and vice versa. Sure. But I, I got to tell you, nothing but love. I, 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 I'll respect you more than I can put into words. Oh, and I am rooting for you big time. I, I, I just... I appreciate My you. heart is full for you. I just, I go get it, man. Go get it. I, I it. love you and I appreciate you so much. I, I, you have no idea, man. Like, literally, ditto. Not only I, was I don't know how to one, say it. <laughs> yeah, it's like the words can't just express. Yep. Mean, we feel it, though, man. And, and yep, it's always been sure. so much love, man. You've always showed me so much love. And I know if you're good with Holly and you're good with Rudy and play poker with us and like getting to know you, yeah. like one on one today was cool because, you know, hey, we might get to banter here and there, but I never really heard some of the things that you feel uh, maybe in a space call that right. I'm doing, right? right? So, yeah, we should grab a mic more often. Sure. And come up I, I will. I will off. for sure. I, I will tell you, I love your spaces. And when I come across things like that, even if I can't 
like engage, I still like to have it on my phone just to show that support. So sometimes I can't get to the mic. Absolutely. But I um, I definitely will. I'm not scared of the mic. I mean, you yeah, know that how it is. So, you know, it's that all part. good. Um, and I will usually have plenty to say. But, uh, <laughs> no, I don't think this is where our journey ends, my friend. I think this is where it begins. And I think that uh, anything you ever need, you reach out uh, for oh, sure. Just, uh, there's four people, at least on the other side of the screen, that are rooting for you. And we got your back no matter what, man. And continue to be a great guy. Continue to be a great father continue to be a great husband and i got no doubt you're going to be a great space host man so get I it appreciate it. i appreciate it. you so much god bless you thank you for having me i know it was uh I'm trying to plan it for a hot minute i'm all right man it happens uh, it's good uh, but man it's not the last one for sure I, for I'm sure here. completely different topic next time but we'll, we'll get into some we'll get into some interesting things so but Let's matt i love you i appreciate you love you too. thanks for coming on thank you take care Caleb, please like and subscribe.